So today we're going to talk about scalp care, shampooing, and conditioning. So shampoo services encompasses three different processes, scalp care, massage, shampooing, and conditioning. It can and should be soothing, pleasurable, um, an experience that sets the mood for the entire visit. It is an opportunity to provide the client with quality relaxation time that is free from the stresses of the day. It should be nurturing and well done and add great benefits to the hair for styling. So to safely and effectively use massage in scalp care, there are two basic requirements for a healthy scalp, which are cleanliness and stimulation. <clears throat> The massage is a method of manipulating the scalp by rubbing, tapping, kneading, or stroking it with the hands. Before performing a shampoo service that includes a scalp massage, complete a client intake or health screening form. During the consultation, discuss any contraindications for scalp massage with your client. Um, before the shampoo, if a scalp condition is present. Um, you should be um, using continuous even motion during the shampoo once conditioner has been applied for relaxation. And a relaxation versus a treatment depends on the products used. And there is a scalp massage procedure. The purpose um, of a normal hair and scalp treatment. That means somebody is not too dry, not too oily. They don't have any dandruff or psoriasis or any other conditions present. Um, the purpose is to maintain scalp and hair in a clean and healthy condition. Perform treatment only after a full and hair scalp examination. So we have to examine the scalp to make sure we can identify any diseases or disorders that may be a reason that we cannot do the service at this time. A dry scalp, a dry hair and scalp treatment is used if they are deficient in natural oil. We can use treatment products that contain moisturizing and emollient ingredients. We want to avoid strong soaps, greasy preparations, lotions with a high alcohol content. And we may use a scalp steamer or we could put a processing cap on them and put them under a regular hood dryer. So oily hair um, and scalp treatments, oiliness is caused by overactive sebaceous glands, whether it be our scalp, hair, or whether it be our skin. So the purpose of the treatment is to reduce any hardened sebum that may have collected in the pores of the scalp. Dandruff is caused by a fungus called Malaysia. I always think Malaysia, that's how I word relate it. You know, what is the technical term for dandruff or what's the fungus um, technical name? And it's Malaysia. The purpose of treatment is to suppress the growth of the Malaysia or the fungus and to loosen the scalp scales. So we can do this a few ways. We, um, sometimes people will use an infrared lamp that um, may be used with massage and this will heat up the scalp and help the products to penetrate deeper into the shaft and the skin of the scalp um, and can help remove any of the scale that may be present. So the benefits of proper brushing, you know, before we start any service, we want to make sure that we properly brush the hair because we're going to stimulate the blood circulation in the scalp because the blood's where the nourishment comes from that feeds our roots to help our hair grow. The hair grows from the root. It does not grow from the ends. We're also going to remove any dust, dirt, and hairspray buildup, any product buildup, and it will give added shine because we're going to distribute the natural oils in the hair. You know, just through our day-to-day -day activities, we're walking around, um, some cities or towns have more air pollution than others. You've got pollen, which we have tons of here. Um, so we need to make sure that we properly brush the hair to help remove those things. We want to avoid brushing if the scalp is irritated prior to a chemical service, prior to or after hair color procedures, prior to or after bleach, lightening, or highlighting services. The hair is weaker when it's been chemically processed. 
Um, there's many different kinds of hairbrushes. We've got natural bris bristles that are usually made from a boar type of hair. A boar is a type of pig. Nylon bristles, you know, those are man-made. Um, and then our hairbrushing procedure. We want to go section by section through the head and brush from the root up. So the purpose of the shampoo service is to cleanse the hair and scalp prior to receiving a service, providing a great canvas for styling and ongoing hair care. Scalp analysis, um, we want to look to see if the hair is dry, dehydrated. We want to see if it's thinning. Um, is there excessive hair in the sink after we shampoo? Is their scalp dry or tight? Do they have an oily scalp? Do they have abnormal flaking on the scalp? Of course, we're looking for any open wounds or scalp irritations because this may um, be a reason we cannot do a service at that time. Scalp diseases or disorders, tick or lice infestation, and we want to follow our basic shampoo and conditioning procedure. So we want to select the proper shampoo for the type of hair that we're dealing with. The scalp and the hair need to be cleansed regularly to combat the accumulation of oils and perspirations that mix with the natural scale and dirt, and they can create a breeding ground for disease-producing bacteria. Hair should be shampooed as often as necessary, and this will differ for different people. Excessive shampooing strips the hair of its protective oils, sebum, and that in small amounts will help seal and protect the hair's cuticle. As a general rule, oily hair needs to be shampooed more often than normal or dry hair. So some considerations, we have to look at the hair type. Are they dry, are they oily, are they normal, are they chemically treated? Hair conditions are over-processed by um, chemicals. You know, maybe someone has um, overused the bleach or, you know, overused color and didn't follow the right procedure for applying color or they've damaged it by harsh products, maybe shampoos that are too high in pH or just improper care or exposure to the elements. Um, you know, men that work out in construction all their lives, the sun can damage your hair and their hair will feel really dry and brittle. Um, you know, if you're exposed to, to sheetrock and brick dust and that kind of thing, you know, it can have an effect on your hair. So the pH scale is what we follow to determine is if a product is acidic or if it's alkaline. Um, so seven is neutral. So anything under seven is acidic and our skin is acidic, our hair is acidic. Um, and we want to use an acid balanced or acidic product when we are caring for the hair. Alkalinity comes into play when we're doing chemical services, we need that alkalinity to open up the cuticle of the hair and allow the chemical process to take place. But when we are just shampooing and conditioning the hair, we want to deal in the acidic zone. So the chemistry of water. Water is a universal solvent, meaning it's capable of dissolving many or more substances than any other solvent. Purification, fresh water comes from lakes and streams and it must be purified for domestic use. Sedimentation, this is a treatment that causes matter to sink to the bottom. Um, filtration, this is passing water through a poor substance such as filter paper or charcoal. It removes suspended clay, sand and organic material. Chlorine can be added in small amounts to kill bacteria. Um, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius and boiling the water destroys microbes. Distillation, this is a process of heating the water, uh, turning it into steam and then cooling it down so it, can, it condenses or cools down back into a liquid and it's collected. Um, this is frequently used um, in the manufacturing of cosmetics. Soft water, which is rainwater or chemically softened water, contains small amounts of minerals and allows soap and shampoo to lather freely. So this would be, you know, when you go to the mountains, if you've ever gone up to the mountains, you'll notice 
how much more sudsy your products are and um, your skin doesn't feel tight when you get out of the bath or shower. Here in our area, we have hard water. Um, some of you may experience like buildup on your sink and bath fixtures and that white scale, um, that calcification. Um, it can be softened by chemical process and some of you may have softeners or um, the equipment that helps to remove the sulfur from the water because you know that egg smell and sulfur will like make black pits in your fixtures and what have you. Um, and sulfur can dull, dull blondes down. So these, these things in, in the hard water can contribute to how our chemical process is able to complete the task successfully or it may be something that we fight against and it can cause us to have a less than desirable outcome. Water temperature, you want to always monitor the temperature and the pressure of the water before and during the service. Um, warmer tempered water is adequate for rinsing. Shampoo and chemical product, cooler water works well to close the um, cuticle post service. So if you've done a deep conditioning treatment or if you've done a hair color, um, you know, we want to lay that cuticle back down and close it up. So we don't want to use hot, hot water when we are dealing with shampooing and rinsing. So water is the main ingredient in most shampoos and it's not just plain water, but it's purified or uh, deionized water that has had the impurities such as calcium and magnesium and other metal ions um, that would make a product unstable. These are removed. Water is usually the first ingredient listed, which indicates the shampoo contains more water than anything else. And from there on, the ingredients are listed in descending order. So the higher on the ingredient list, the more of that um, product percentage wise is contained in your shampoo. Surfactants and detergent are synonymous. They mean uh, a cleansing or surface active agent. A hydrophilic end, this is the head end of a shampoo molecule that is water attracting, hydro water, hydrophilic water attracting. Lipophilic end, this is the tail of a shampoo molecule and it's oil attracting, lipo, think liposuction, fat, you know, it's an oil. Since both ends are working during a shampoo, a push pull effect is created that causes the oils, dirt and deposits to form little balls. So it's kind of a, a push and pull motion and it lifts the dirt off and then it can be easily rinsed from the hair. So the chemistry of shampoo, um, to determine what shampoo will leave your client's hair in the best condition is uh, for the intended service, you need to understand the chemical and botanical ingredients regularly found in shampoos. Many shampoos have ingredients in common. It is often the small differences in formulation that make one shampoo better than another for a particular hair texture or condition. So image one here, we've got the tail of the shampoo molecule and it's attracted to the oil and the dirt because it's the lipophilic. Um, image two shows shampoo causing the oils to roll up into small globules. Image three, the head of the shampoo attracts water molecules, molecules. And then image four, thorough rinsing washes away the debris and the excess shampoo. So types of shampoos, we have pH balance. This means um, that it is the same pH as our skin or hair, 4.5 to 5.5. Conditioning shampoos are going to have moisturizing ingredients to help to make the, sh the hair smooth, shiny, improve manageability, and avoid damage <clears throat> to chemically treated hair. Medicated shampoos contain special ingredients that are effective in reducing, uh, reducing dandruff and relieve scalp conditions. Some may require a prescription. Clarifying, also known as chelating, um, helps to bind to metals such as iron and copper and remove them from the hair, as well as equalizing agent that enriches the hair, helps it to retain moisture and makes the hair more manageable. If any of you are on a well and you experience rust stains in your sinks or tubs, you have iron in your water. Um, blondes, it will turn you brassy. 
Um, that's a problem with people that are on wells, and that's when you would need a softening system to help remove that iron. Um, it also will have a metallic smell to it. Strengthening shampoos contain a variety of strengtheners and nourishing ingredients. These are, help, these are designed to help repair damage and soften brittle hair. Dry shampoo is a powder. It can be sprayed. It can be puffed. Um, it's going to pick up dirt and oil as you brush or comb through the hair, um, help to put some volume back in that hair. Um, and shampoo, powder shampoo, dry shampoo is great, but it's not meant to be used for a week in between shampoos. Um, you know, it's if you're someone that doesn't have that drier hair texture, I shampoo every other day. Some people may shampoo every two days, but dry shampoo should not replace regular shampooing and conditioning the hair. Sulfate-free shampoos, sometimes called soap-free, are formulated with no alkaline soap base. And there's a big push for sulfate-free shampoos. They're better for um, chemically or colored hair. Um, because they don't have that alkaline base to them. Um, there's shampoos for thinning hair that can give some volume boosting ingredients and give the illusion of additional volume and density. Usually they are depositing some type of polymer on the hair to make the hair appear thicker. Neutralizing shampoos, these are designed to rebalance the pH of the hair by neutralizing any alkali. Uh, example of this would be relaxer, sodium hydroxide relaxer. You have to use a neutralizing shampoo after sodium, hydro uh, sodium hydroxide relaxer. Color enhancing, these have a color pigment similar to a temporary rinse that can refresh hair color in between seeing your stylist. And then there are special um, weed cleaning solutions that are available for any hair enhancements you may have. So shampooing clients with special needs, clients with disabilities or those who are wheelchair bound will usually tell you how they prefer to be shampooed. You may need to wheel the chair up to the sink and have them lean over the sink, you know, as if you were doing it in the kitchen sink at home. So if you ever open a shop or build a shop, you want to make sure you have a sink that is set lower for these particular um, clients so they would be able just to easily lean over. Um, the same goes for clients with other special needs. You can ask about their preferences and make sure that their comfort and safety are, are a priority. Recommend and use conditioners. There are conditioners that deposit protein and moisturize. They can restore strength and give body. They protect against breakage. Um, types are cleansing, rinse out, treatment or repair or leave-ins. Um, the ones that, you know, contain proteins are great, but you can't overdo protein. You want to be careful about that because too much protein will actually make the hair feel brittle. There is nothing out there that can reverse damage. It can only alleviate symptoms. So these products are alleviate, alleviating symptoms of frizziness or um, lack of body or hair that's been chemically damaged. The only way to truly get rid of damaged hair is to cut it off. So silicone and moisture binding humectants are contained in the formulation and then there's protein conditioners. So these substances absorb or promote the retention of moisture. When you have a humectant, it's moisture attracting. Um, protein conditioners are designed to penetrate the cortex and reinforce the hair shaft temporarily to reconstruct the hair. Moisturizing conditioners also contain humectants that attract moisture from the air, and these are absorbed into the cortex, and the cortex is that middle section of your hair under the cuticle. Other condition agents, we've got thermal protectants, scalp conditioners, medicated scalp lotions, scalp astringents. If you're someone that has oily hair um, that you would do before you shampoo um, and apply the astringent lotion while they're laid back in the sink, let it, you know, just massage it around for a minute, and then you would shampoo and condition and proceed with your styling. 
Um, if you're using any heat appliances, you always need to use a thermal protectant. These curling irons can get up to 450 degrees. Um, you've got to have something on there that's going to protect that hair. And not every hair type needs to be flat ironed at 450. That's why there's a temperature gauge on it. Even blow drying, um, you need to adjust your temperature on your blow drying. You know, you'll use it on a high setting to help remove most of the excess moisture. Then you can bump it down to your medium setting. You don't have to keep it on high for the entire blow dry. So deep conditioning mask or conditioning packs. These are mixtures of concentrated protein and a heavy cream based or moisturizer. They penetrate the cuticle layer. Um, use when an equal degree of moisture and protein is required. So they may be marketed as deep conditioners, reconstructors, that kind of thing. So we want to make sure that we properly drape our client. Um, the worst thing you want to do is get somebody wet. Um, so you're going to use a towel underneath the cape and then you're going to put one on top. Um, and then once you're done shampooing, you can replace um, a the towel with a neck strip and then recape them. The cape is not supposed to touch the skin. So if they have a collar, you would want to turn it inward. Um, do your two towel uh, um, while you are doing the shampoo. And then again, you want to replace that cape. If you're going to cut the hair, you would replace it with a hair cutting cape and you could use a neck strip underneath it in order to keep the cape from touching their skin. When we're doing a chemical services, again, we're going to use two towels because we need to protect the client and their clothing. So again, it's going to be one towel under and one over um, to help not damage their clothing and again, not to get them wet. Because someone may be coming in for um, a service that maybe they've got somewhere to go afterwards and you know, you've wet their blouse down or you've gotten bleach on it or color, um, then you're going to look at paying for someone to replace an article of clothing. So the three part procedure, you know, first we want to prepare. So before our client comes in, we have prepared and laid out all our tools and supplies and instruments and everything we know that we're going to need for that particular service. They should not wait for you to gather up what you need. Um, then we're going to do the service on the client. And then post-service is we want to make sure we can explain the products that we used on them. You can have them sitting out on your counter, how they benefit them. You've got to tell people why is this product worth a little bit more money than, than what you would pay in Target or Walmart. Um, and I always use the example, you know, you're not going to use Dawn to dish detergent on your Mercedes, brand new Mercedes you just bought. So when somebody's paid, you know, 150 bucks for color style service, certain shampoos and conditioners can strip color if they're too alkaline and then they're washing their money down the drain. All right, so cleanliness is the key to attractive hair. As a professional, you'll need to be able to analyze hair type, hair products, determine the best products for your client, and always follow the manufacturer's directions when using any product, including shampoos. Um, 